when we started making our film, intimacy coordination didn't exist. We started working on this film before the Harvey Weinstein scandal broke and we were sort of in on the ground floor. Women have to fight for ownership of their own body. If everybody is complaining about the same thing, maybe we can do something about it. I really enjoyed the documentary. It's about time somebody covers this subject matter. Um, if you love movies, it's a little disheartening finding out these, th these behind the scenes um, things that have going, been going on with actors and actresses, right? When you were researching this? Well, our hope is that audiences do watch films and TV with a different lens, thinking about the actors' perspectives. And, um, you know, we've, we've always kind of compared it to an ingredient list, right? That you want to know what goes into your body. It's the same thing with the media that you consume. You come at it from a historical point of view, um, which I loved because I'm a history buff. Um, and it reminded me of my college days when I was studying film history. You talk about the 20s and the 30s when we had a lot of female writers um, behind the scenes. And, you know, they're the ones that gave us Betty Davis and Garbo. And I love that whole history part about it. Um, what, would you, what was the most fascinating thing you found out um, when you were researching that time period? Well, I, I do. I didn't know all that history. This was a heavily researched film, and we really relied on scholars like Linda Williams and Mick LaSalle, who've written books. Mick LaSalle wrote a great book on pre-code women. And, uh, you know, I thought that was important information to bring to contemporary audiences that the code and the studio system created a hostile space for women that we, that legacy is still part of our legacy today. And that there was a time before and a time of course outside and in a place outside of the studio system where other kinds of work were being made. Uh, so I'm surprised because the most famous story we've heard about this last tango in Paris, right? Um, what Bernardo Berlucci, um, well, it's claimed, the actors claim that um, I mean, you know the story. I don't want to tell the whole sordid story, but uh, any reason why you didn't include that story in the in the documentary? We had that in till the very last moment, but our film is primarily from a sort of an eyewitness perspective, mm -hmm. and we just okay. don't have Maria Schneider anymore. And there's a great short that came out this year. It was at Berlin, I think, or Cannes. I can't remember. Um, that uses archival interview of her and has these different actresses recreate um, that experience. So we did, we tried, we really tried. It's so important. It's also, this film is about American cinema. And even though Brando is an American actor, you know, it was a, it was a co-production. Um, mm -hmm. And it's difficult to get it all in. There were other... <laughs> or important points that related to this that we just couldn't squeeze in. For some reason, saying no would make me more vulnerable than being naked. I'm sure it wasn't too difficult to get Jane Fonda and Rosanna Arquette um, in your documentary because they're very outspoken. They're no longer scared to speak out, which is great. It's scary to think that these women were afraid to say anything when they were younger, you know, but now they feel very empowered. So you can talk about getting them on board to talk about their experiences. Sure. Um, I'd say it's always a challenge to get celebrity. Yes, it's true. Jane Fonda and Rosanna Arquette are very articulate and very courageous, and we're really grateful to have them in the film. And it's a challenge to get anybody to give the time and share their experience, especially celebrities who are really grateful for their participation and for the other people who are in the film. Um, and it's constantly a, a challenge to get people to navigate through the process of agents and managers and um, whatnot. We feel really lucky for the people that we have in the film that are uh, don't have the protections of the of of a team behind them the lesser known actors we feel like offer a lot to the film um, perspectives that are lesser known and and harder to get and there's some names thrown about like Blake Edwards and an incident that happened with Rosanna Arquette and you're like oh, you know you you have once at night you admire these directors and then you find out all this past history even with Alfred Hitchcock it's not in your documentary but you start to find out about uh, all these other instances and other famous filmmakers and uh, you know you kind of start looking at their work in a different way did that happen for you guys 
it was always a revelation and it's still happening right i mean this that story about romeo and juliet and zeffirelli just came out and that was i i mean i don't I just remember that film really well from being a young young person and seeing it and seeing nudity and and yeah it changes your perspective um definitely as a parent too thinking about how young some of these actors were and what was being asked of them and how casual that I think that's the part that always you know, as a more mature person and as a parent, just really is frightening to think about how casual and how they're sort of tossed to the lions, so to speak, in terms of doing these scenes of intimacy and just take your top off, you know, uh, the things that people were putting up with is terrible. Mm -hmm. And uh, it all leads to talking about uh, a new thing in Hollywood, now intimacy, a coordinator, uh, it's so surprising that they didn't have this beforehand. And you heard about closed sets and, you know, actors always talk about, well, it's not romantic because it's so technical, uh, but yet still things were happening. So can you talk about how important this um, intimacy coordinator is now, nowadays? I I do think it's a, a, a shock that no, that this has not been a delineated set position, given how often people are simulating sex and being asked to do nudity, that there's nobody really watching over them. And Hollywood and in film and television, you don't have a central HR, you're moving from set to set. So that even further diminishes the oversight. There's no, there was no oversight. And this is mm -hmm. just a little, a little, um, a little bit uh, in terms of managing that oversight and protecting actors and protect particularly protecting women actors. Um, but it's been powerful. It's been a powerful shift in the industry to have an advocate for both sides. I've, I've heard that men are just as happy to have male, male actors are just as happy because they're really confused about what's appropriate or what's going too far. And how can you be in character if you've got all these other things that you're thinking about, not only how I look, but am I doing something wrong? Um, what are the boundaries? What is okay? And I, I think it speaks to just a larger issue about consent and what consent is and how poor we've been at communicating consent in this country. And also the confusion that happens for, for actors and actresses sometimes when they're in the midst of a very directed film to suddenly be asked to improvise when it came to the sex scenes. Many people felt like there was a sort of abdication on um, um, direction in those moments of like, where do you put your hand? What are you looking What You know, what are we doing in this particular shot? And it was sort of separated from shots and, and becoming more improvised in a way that when they're having the questions that Christy just spoke to about what are the boundaries? What am I doing? How am I feeling? How do I look? And, and then also not having necessarily clear direction um, complicates matters. Yeah, I mean, you wondered um, some sex scenes that are famous, and you're like, how do they do that? That's just so, you know, it's, they're invading your personal space. You know, it's just so, it's so weird to me that they can, you know, people can just kind of turn it on and turn it off on camera. Um, so for you guys, yeah, it's so, I mean, it's so interesting. I think it's Guinevere, Guinevere Turner who says, you know, you're really kissing somebody. So they're, even though you're not really, not really having sex there's real physical Contact. intimacy and that is so tricky psychologically um and you're in these intense environments where you're working on a set in a film at least for you know weeks at a time um so it gets complicated and yeah i'm, I'm just, just I, I think it's such a wonderful thing the rise of intimacy coordination and uh, it only makes for better filmmaking. And it's happened really fast. When we started making our film, intimacy coordination didn't exist. We started working on this film before the Harvey Weinstein scandal broke and we were sort of in on the ground floor as it was just starting. And they're still very much in the process of standardizing what it's going to look like and, and how one uh, enters into that world. Um, so it's, it'll, it's, it's, it's pretty shocking that we've gotten this whole new crew position in just the past four years. Yeah, it's, it's surprising. And hopefully actors 
younger actors will see, you know, the people you have speaking uh, about that and hopefully feel like they're, they can speak up. Cause you know, when they were talking about how well, I was young, if I said no, I mean, that happens still today in any kind of industry. Like, well, if I say no, they're going to look at me like, you know, the troublemaker, you know, that's always been a thing right. with us, with us women, right? Like, oh, we're troublemakers if we speak up. Well, that's nice that you just made the connection to in any type of industry, because that's ultimately the goal with the film is that much as it's a film that focuses on what happens in the entertainment industry, the impact is really when you look at the larger other under other industries as well. Now, recently, uh, an actor ra- an actor um, spoke out about uh, how intimacy coordinators are ruining um, scenes. <laughs> what, did, what did you think about that when that when he came out? Of course, he got grilled for it, but, you know, he'll still be cast in, in things. Yeah, he was quickly pummeled. Um, I think a lot of uh, actors came forward and and just debunked that point of view. I mean, it is part of the challenge in intimacy coordination is uh, they're not a they're not the police, <laughs> and so letting both directors, producers, and the actors um, know that they're there to be their advocates, and however you know they can help out, and that they're not there to tell people what they can't do. Mm-hmm. Um, but you need just like a stunt coordinator, you need guidelines, and you need people to be safe. And what do you think, what do you hope um, audiences take away from watching Body Parts? Well, I one, one major thing is just thinking, uh, having audiences really think about what goes into the making of these films and to consider the actor's perspective and to support also women-centered narratives because they rely so much on what happens at the box office. Um, Women are not allowed to fail, right? Women-led stories are not allowed to fail. Women directors aren't allowed to fail, whereas men can fail up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so, uh, you know, supporting films and television that center women's narratives that are directed and led by women. um, And to think about some of these aspects of what goes into the making of these films and to request more knowledge about it, request more information about it. Yeah, I mean, our hope is also that film schools and young directors and young writers take note and and that, you know, the the intimacy coordination is largely in union sets and so there oh. does need to be safety practices for independent film for film school films and that's one of the things that we hope our film can help is to provide a set a set of uh, safe best practices in terms of filmmaking for people that don't have those kinds of protections do you have any favorite films any recent films that you that you love that best exemplify uh, the change well I really I really just loved making our sort of third act like what can be different and what are some of the solutions and how do you open that window of diversity so that we see older women having uh, you know sexual appetites and desire that we see women of different body sizes and abilities being seen as desirable I mean I I love all of that um I thought Lady Chatterley's Lover was really interesting and they used an intimacy coordinator and they uh, the director's been talking about that Corsage is a really great European film that I thought played in that space really well. And of course, the films that we highlight, the shows like Vita, which mm-hmm. I thought was really radical, the work of Joey Soloway in Transparent and I Love Dick, again, super <laughs> radical. And um, some fun stuff like what Stacey Ruxayer does in Sex Life and also the um, college, the, the, ah, uh, the Sex Life of College Girls, which is now in its third season, I believe, or starting its third season. And we also love movies that we didn't profile in the film that are really naturalistic, women-centered films like Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always that talks about um, a young woman's quest to get an abortion and 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 the struggles to do that from a really naturalistic perspective that's not um, overly sexualizing the female body. 
Oh my gosh. Uh, and and thank, thank you, Leo Grande, um, with that oh. beautiful, um, you know, just showing an older woman's body as it is. I, I love that. And exploring her sexuality. Oh yeah, I love that film. It was so it was so well done. I was I was shocked. Um, and it's funny because Sex Girls or what's it called? Uh, se uh, sex girls Lives of College Girls. Sex Lives of College Girls. I was totally turned off by the title because I thought, oh, another male oriented, you know, it's going to sexualize girls in college. And then when you when you talk about it in your doc, I'm like, oh, maybe I will check it out. Because I just, in my head, it was just like, you go to the, the ordinary, you know? So I'm actually going to um, check that out. Uh, well, thank you so much. Like I said, I enjoyed it greatly, especially the historical part. I think it's really important to kind of craft everything, you know, up until the present. So I uh, really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Great work. Thank, Thank you for you. your time.